So today I decided to talk about dependent voltage and current sources. What's a dependent source you might ask? Well, to explain that, it's easier to first look at what an independent voltage or current source is. Basically, these are the sources that you would normally use in LTSPICE. So here we have an independent voltage source. Why is it called independent? Well, because the value you set, either a DC value or any sort of predefined waveform, is independent of anything else going on inside the circuit. So whatever you set as an output value is what you get when you run the simulation. It has absolutely nothing to do with anything else inside the circuit. Now, dependent source is a type of supply in LTSPICE for which the output value depends on something else inside the simulation. It can depend on a voltage, on a current, or something else. But what are these things good for? Why bother having a source that depends on something else? Well, one of the applications of such a dependent source is when you're modeling components. For example, if we look on the Wikipedia page of the op amp, we will see that it's modeled as a voltage dependent voltage source, where the output voltage depends on the input voltage multiplied by gain. We also have some input and output resistances. Why bother doing this? Well, it's always much easier to simulate free components rather than 100 transistors which normally make up an op amp. So these types of sources are used to simplify simulations and to take very complicated circuits and just model their final output, not model every single piece inside them. Does this make the simulation better? Well, not in all cases, but it definitely makes the simulation faster. There's a saying, there's no such thing as a bad simulator, only bad models. Okay, so let's start looking at these dependent sources. First thing we're gonna look at is the voltage dependent voltage source. This is coded in LTSPICE as an E source. Basically, this will have an input voltage, it will be multiplied by a gain, and it will give us an output voltage. So we can find it under the normal components and just look for the E source. We've got an E and an E2, the difference is where the plus and the minus inputs are. So let's make a short circuit with this thing. So basically what I did here is connected an independent voltage source to our dependent voltage source. And our output voltage will be the input voltage multiplied by a gain, which I will have to write in here. So for example, let's just say 10. That means if I have here a one volt supply and I run the simulation, let's say for one second, doesn't really matter. Then I have my one volt input voltage and I expect a 10 volt output voltage. If we check it, we have exactly 10 volts. So our voltage dependent voltage source has taken our input voltage, multiplied it by a gain factor, and then got us an output voltage. Okay, what if we don't like voltages? What if we like currents? Well, for that we have a voltage dependent current source. This works just like the voltage dependent voltage source, but in this case, the output current depends on the input voltage and a gain factor. So this is known in LTSPICE as a G source. So let's try and play with one of these. I'm using my same input voltage and I will also be connecting it to a simple one kilo ohm resistor. Value doesn't really matter in this case, it's just for example purposes. And again, we will set the gain, doesn't really matter what value you put here, let's put one. So we're expecting one volt multiplied by one to be one amp. Let's see what happens. Our previous circuit is working just the same as before, but now if we look at the output of our G source, we see one kilovolt. Why one kilovolt? Well, if we check the current, it's because we have one amp going through one kilo ohm. Okay, so we looked at voltage dependent sources. But what happens if we don't want to depend on a voltage, but we want to depend on a current? Well, again, LTSPICE has an answer for that. And it's called an H source. It's a current dependent voltage source. In this case, we will have an input current multiplied by a gain, and this will give us a certain voltage. So let's try using this thing. We will use as reference the same voltage source that we had in the first simulation. So our V1, 
but this time since we can't depend on the voltage coming out of it we have to depend on the current coming out of it so through a one kilo ohm resistor our voltage source is generating one milliamp and we will be using a linear current dependent voltage source the load is being added just for example purposes now how to correctly use this well instead of our h we can't really write in just the gain first we need to write in the voltage source from which it's getting the current information from we will write in v1 and then a gain of let's say 10 so we're using the current information from v1 source multiplying it by 10 and let's see what happens we have 1 milliamp multiplied by 10 it's 10 millivolts it's important to mention that these types of sources can only work with a source current coming from a voltage source so we cannot use it to take the current from a resistor or something else if we run it like this we will get an error telling us that we don't have a controlling source so now we have a current dependent voltage source but what happens if we want a current dependent current source well we've got that also it's called an f type of source the current dependent current source again we need the current information from a voltage source and we will have to multiply it with a gain so let's just take a simple f source add a load to it connect everything together and just like before we need to add here the source of the current information which will be voltage source one and we need to add the gain so again we will put 10 if we remember from last time we had one milliamp going through our voltage source multiplying it by 10 we should expect 10 milliamps this time since it's a current source now if we simulate and we check we got exactly 10 milliamps okay so we had a look at the four basic types of sources in which we take information from our circuit and we multiply it by certain gain but what happens if you want something much more complicated let's say we don't just want the information from one source or we want more complicated formula or something well lt spice has an answer for that and it comes in the form of the arbitrary behavioral voltage or current sources these are the b v or b i sources in this case we can use any sort of formula using all sorts of mathematical functions we can use constants we can use time dependencies and basically make any sort of complex modeling so let's try out one of these first let's start with the voltage source just add a simple load to it and add some sort of formula so we need to keep this v equals something and then let's say we want the current going through R3 multiplied by 10 plus 5. So what do we expect to get out of this? If we run it, it works and we get the voltage of 5.01. So where did this come from? It took the current going through R3, which was 0.01 from 1 milliamp multiplied by 10 it's 10 milli and added 5 so 5.01 exactly what we got at the output we can make more complex things we can add other information we can add the current going through r5 and we can add voltages at certain nodes so this formula can be as simple or as complicated as you want it to be and again we get 6.20 and we can go through all these parameters to see exactly where that came from and of course we have the behavioral voltage source and the behavioral current source in this case it's exactly the same the only difference is that this type of source will give us a current depending on the formula so we can take the exact same formula we had in the previous example and just write it in here after i equals now if we run it on the right side we had 6.02 volts on the left side we have 6.02 amps so both sources are doing the exact same thing so in conclusion these are the six types of dependent sources in ld spice on the left side the current sources and on the right side the voltage sources hope you'll find some use for these in modeling simplify and to ease simulation of more complicated circuits hope you got some useful information out of this video leave your thoughts in the comments 
and see you next time. Bye-bye.